Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the best handheld gaming PC that you've probably never heard of. This is the Terrence Force Handle 5. We've got a powerful Zen 4 8-core CPU paired up with RDNA 3 graphics and a beautiful 120Hz 7-inch 1080p IPS display. We've also got hall-based analog sticks and hall-based triggers, and inside of the box along with the Handle 5, we've got a 100-watt PD fast charger, USB Type-C cable, and I've also got a user manual. Now there's a lot that I want to test with this, I'm going to go over quite a bit in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. My warning is totally gone. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so taking a look at the overall unit, as you can see up front, we do have that Terrence Force logo, but luckily it's actually just a screen protector. You can go ahead and peel this off. This unit actually came to me with a one terabyte drive pre-installed, but I replaced it with a two terabyte drive and all of the drivers are actually downloadable over on Terrence Force website. The only thing that I couldn't get working here after the new install were the uh, RGB bumpers. These are RGB, they're fully controllable, but unfortunately the driver over there isn't available at the time of making this video. But just know, we do have a little bit of RGB, and around back they have kind of added their own little touch to the rear of the shell. I'm not a huge fan of it, but this is something I can get past as long as it performs well. And again, I do want to mention that this is just a screen protector with that Terrence Force on the front, so you can remove this if you want to. But when it comes to the built-in controls, over here on the left-hand side, we do have a dedicated home button. This will bring us to the desktop at any given time. We've also got our start button up at the top. Hall-based analog stick over here, which feels great. But when it comes to this D-pad, you know, I've never been a big fan of these dish style. Now, it does work for platformers and fighting games, but I just wish it had a little more roll to it. It is using a conductive pad underneath it, just like the action buttons over here. And we've got our start button way up top. We've also got a keyboard button that's going to bring up the keyboard at any given time. And we've got our control center button. Now from here, we can change the resolution. We'll take a closer look. It's a little minimal right now. Hopefully they do add more, but it works with what we have. And of course, up top, we've got our shoulder buttons. We've also got hall-based analog triggers, fingerprint slash power button for logging into Windows, our volume rocker, and we've got a dedicated power mode button. So we can go to balanced or what they're calling rage, and rage is 28 watts with a boost up to 35. This thing performs pretty well at the higher wattages for sure. And as for the USB Type-C port, it is USB 4, 40 gigs, so you can easily connect an eGPU here. Moving around to the bottom, micro SD card slot. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and another USB 4.0, 40 gig port. And when it comes to the specs, for the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. Based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost up to 5.1. Built-in AMD Radeon 780M graphics. Based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units up to 2700 MHz. You can pick this up with either 16 or 32 GB of LPDDR5 at 6400 megatransfers per second. I've got the 32 gigabyte model here that we're going to be taking a look at. A 120 hertz 7 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, 450 nits of brightness, and it is 100% sRGB. This does use a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD. It's PCIe Gen 4, so you can easily upgrade this, and it's a lot cheaper than the 2230s for some of the other handhelds on the market. I've got a 2 terabyte in here now. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 50.04 watt-hour battery with 100 watt fast charging capabilities. This is coming in at 688 grams, so it is on the heavier side when you compare it to some of the other similarly sized handhelds. 
Now, I am running Windows 11 on this, that's what it comes pre-installed with, and it does have a built-in gyro. Overall, I do like the design, it actually feels really nice in the hand. Not a huge fan of the artwork on the rear, but I completely understand what they were going for, they wanted to brand their handheld. All of the buttons can be reached very easily, and it does sit really nice in the palm, the way they've designed the palm rest around back. We do have some proprietary software installed that'll allow us to tweak and tune everything. But uh, when it comes to the home button, no matter where you are, it'll bring you right back to the desktop. We've also got an on-screen keyboard button. This will bring it up, and I've detached the keyboard. Usually it comes up right at the bottom there. And we've also got our control center button. So if we tap this once, it'll bring it up. From here, we can change it from 15 watts up to 28. We can change the controller mode. So we can go to controller mode or keyboard mode, resolution, brightness. We can disable the Wi-Fi, just like a lot of the other handhelds with control centers built in. And if we hold it for three seconds, it'll bring up Game Assistant. We can actually remap the buttons. We can change the dead zones if you need to. You can change the sensitivity of the analog sticks and the triggers. There's a game launcher built in here, so you will have to go in manually and scan the games, at least at the time of making this video. It also supports several different storefronts, Xbox, Epic, Steam. So yeah, we've got a little bit of tweaking and tuning that we can do. Not too much right now, and hopefully this does get updated. But uh, again, up top, we've got our performance button. When that green light is on, it's telling us that we're in balance mode. This is running at 15 watts, but as soon as I press this, it'll actually go to what they're calling rage mode. 28 watts with a boost up to 35 for a period of time, and at 28 watts, this thing definitely puts down the power. Before we get into some PC game testing, I did want to give you a look at some benchmarks here, and first up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, 2510, multi, 11633. Not bad here, I mean, single and multi is looking great. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid, 28,256, Fire Strike, 7,686, and finally, Time Spy with a 3,204. The highest score that I've ever seen from the 7840U was around 3,300, a little over 3,300. So we're coming in super close here, and we've only got that 6,400 mega transfers per second RAM. If this was rocking 75, we could definitely see a nice little bump in performance, but the way it's sitting with these synthetics, it's looking like it's performing on par, if not better, than some of the other 7840U handhelds out there right now. Since we've got this 120Hz display, I figured I'd go ahead and show it off. We've got Shredder's Revenge. I am in balance mode, but we're not quite pulling 15 watts. And you can always adjust the TDP on this, installing a third-party app or going into the BIOS. Having a few extra settings from the game assistant would be nice, like 10 watts, maybe even an 18 watt, because this will run at 120 hertz around 12 watts on the 7840U. And I know it doesn't transfer well over to a YouTube video, but playing these easier to run games at 120 hertz is so smooth. Next up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I'll go ahead and say it, this is some of the best performance that I've seen on a handheld so far, and I think it really comes down to the latest updates to the game and the newer AMD drivers. But right now, we're only at 15 watts, 1080p, low FSR set to performance, and I'm getting an average of around 67 FPS, but you do see it will dip under 60. That's how it's been with this game and these uh, RDNA 3 iGPUs, but in my opinion, this game is still very playable. We gotta wait at least another year for number 6, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw number 5 in here. At 15 watts, 1080p, normal settings, we're getting an average of around 66 FPS. But remember, we've got Rage Mode, so this is gonna take it up to a supposed 28 watts, but we've got kind of a higher boost. I've seen it go up to around 35 in some cases. But yeah, this will definitely unlock a lot of performance, and this is a very CPU-heavy game. So it's hitting up those Zen 4 cores, but they can handle this just fine. Here's Mortal Kombat 1, and this is one of those games where we do have to run these APUs at a higher wattage to get decent performance, and it's still not there just yet, at least 1080p. Low settings, FSR set to performance here, and you can see it's dipping under 60. At 720p, we can run this all day at 60, around 28 watts, but I just wanted to see if we could do it at 1080. Not quite yet, but I do have a feeling that with some driver updates and things like that, we will see much better performance at this higher resolution. 
I also wanted to test the built-in benchmark for Horizon Zero Dawn. 1080p medium settings, we're at 15 watts right now, and at the end of this benchmark, we had an average of only 60 FPS. Usually, I introduce some FSR, or if I don't do that, I'll take the wattage up a bit, and 18 watts with this game on the 7840U is a real nice sweet spot. At 18 watts, we can get an average of 68 with this here, and I mean, it's really playable, but at 15, still right there on the edge. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077 1080p, low FSR set to performance. We're at 15 watts right now, and I suggest if you're going to be running this at 15 watts, go to 720p, but if you want good performance at 1080, you will have to up that TDP, and now in rage mode, we can get an average of around 73 FPS with this game. And keep in mind, with all of the games that we tested here, we're just using those two presets that come preloaded. Not sure if in the future we will have more presets. Or, if you don't mind installing a third-party app like x86 Tuning Utility, you can really tweak and tune the iGPU clocks and the CPU clocks along with the TDP, allowing you to get much better performance in some games, or if you wanted to just kind of save battery life, you could use it for that also. Before I wrap this first look video up, I did want to give you an idea about battery life here. Remember, we've got a 50.04 watt hour battery, and with my test, I use an uncapped frame rate, screen brightness at 100%, and with a 15 watt TDP profile, total battery draw is 28.6 watts. Actually, much better than I thought it was going to be. On the Steam Deck, at least the LCD version, it's around 27. I've seen it jump up to around 28 every once in a while. We can see around 105 minutes of gameplay out of this. And keep in mind, I mean, that's not just sitting there idle. That's playing a game, so we're totally maxed out there at 15 watts. And at that 28 watt profile, or the rage mode, total draw is 44.2 watts, giving us around 67 minutes, so an hour at full bow. So far, not a bad little Windows gaming handheld. It's fallen right in line with the other handhelds on the market when it comes to performance and battery life, and I suspected we'd kind of get the same thing throughout. A lot of these out there are using the 7840U, and really when it comes down to it, that Ryzen Z1 Extreme is the 7840U anyway. Personally, I think it's a really comfortable handheld. Now, I could definitely do without all of the uh, branding on the unit itself, but having that 120Hz display is also really great. Now, it's not a free sync display. It only goes up to 120. And of course, we're not going to be running a lot of AAA games at 120, but it's great for indie games or older PC games that are capable of running that high with this 7840U. I will be spending some more time with this. Hopefully, we get an update with some more power profiles. And if not, you can always create your own. I think 18 watts would be really nice here. Maybe just a 15, 18, 20, and then up to your rage mode, which would be 28, would be perfect for this handheld. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link to Mini XPC. They're actually selling this in the States. I believe it's in stock now. If not now, in a couple weeks, it will be ready to go. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this handheld, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.